You will need to remove the valve cover and gasket to adjust the valves, so please see the link at the end of this video for additional assistance. Remember, the engine must be stone cold before adjusting the valves. You are going to be turning the cam to adjust each lobe and valve. You can turn the cam by using a 27 millimeter wrench on the large nut on the crank dampener. Always make sure to rotate the cam clockwise. You are going to be measuring the distance between the tappet, as indicated by the yellow arrow, and the cam while the lobe is all the way at the top, red arrow, for each valve. For the intake valve, you will need a four thousandths of an inch or a 0 0.102 millimeter feeler. The exhaust uses a 1200th inch or a 0 0.305 millimeter feeler. Due to the tight space between the valves, cam, and injectors, you will need two 14 millimeter wrenches for adjusting and locking the nuts. The wrenches need to be bent at a 30 to 40 degree an inch or two away from the opening. While well, you can buy some very expensive tools just for this job, if you have a vise and a torch you can make your own. You're going to be working around an open flame and getting metal very hot, so make sure to take all the necessary precautions. Like good gloves, eye protection, no loose clothes, and have a fire extinguisher handy. Make sure it's full and then you know how to use it. Place your wrench with the end you are going to bend into the vise. Using your torch and heat the shaft of the wrench where you want to bend it. Let the metal get really hot. It will make bending it much easier. With the metal really hot, place a piece of pipe over the wrench and bend it to the angle you need. Never try and bend it by hand unless you have welding gloves. The pipe will protect your hand, increase the mechanical advantage, and help protect you if the wrench breaks. There are two adjusting nuts on the valves. The upper nut, which sets the distance between the cam and the tappet, red arrow, and the locking nut, yellow arrow, you use to tighten them up together once the height has been adjusted. If the valve adjustment is too tight to begin with, you will need to loosen the lower tightening nut first. Whereas if the distance is too loose, you can start by going up on the upper nut. This photo shows a series of intake valves, white letters, and the exhaust valves, red letter E. Do not forget they have different height settings. With the cam load pointing straight up, you want to be able to put the appropriate feeler gauge between the tappet and the cam, and there should be a slight drag. You will get a feel for it as you go but the feeler gauge should slip in and out with a slight tug. If it will not go in, the valve is too tight, and if it just falls in with no resistance, the valve is too loose. The locking nut on the bottom is thinner than the adjusting nut, red arrow, on the top. Make sure that the wrench you use on the bottom is thin enough, yellow arrow, that it does not block you adjusting the top nut independently. Now you can use your two wrenches and feeler gauge to adjust and check the valves. Do not get frustrated if the clearance changes while you are tightening the lock and adjusting nuts down. This is common to everyone and you will get the hang of it as you go along. Once the valve is adjusted, rotate the cam and move on to the next valve, remembering to use the right feeler gauge depending on whether it's intake or exhaust. Once they're all adjusted, I'd like to do a final check on each with a feeler gauge before buttoning everything back up. Thanks for watching. Click here to view the original article, along with hundreds of other DIY content for your car.